Okay, so solving systems by elimination, take a minute and copy down those first four. Oh, Shai. Good question. Um, you're going to have assignments on each method individually, so you have to know how to do both. But when it comes time for your chapter test, I'm just going to hand it to you and say, here, solve it. And I don't care which method you use. Um, that being said, there are times when one is easier than the other. So it's good to know how to do both of them. I mean, everyone's going to have sort of a preference. But um, sometimes you're going to look at one and be like, oh, that's so a substitution one. And just jump right in with substitution. Okay? All right. So jot these four down. Okay, so with substitution, we always had to start with one variable by itself, right? With elimination, you start a little differently. You want to start by making sure that your x's and y's are lined up. So you'll see that in these equations, they all start with like something x and something y and a number on the end. They're like lined up with each other, okay? So this is when usually elimination is the easier one to use. And what this whole method relies on is taking the two equations stacked on top of each other and adding them together up and down and making one of the variables cancel out. So in that first example, if I combined going up and down, do you see that my 3y and my minus 3y are going to cancel out? That's what we want to have happen. So that one's really convenient that it's set up that way for you. I must have thought, gosh, let's start with a nice easy one. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add going up and down, so x plus 2x is 3x, 3y and negative 3y cancel, and then 14 plus negative 8, or 14 minus 8, is 6. So then what does x equal? So see, that kind of accomplishes the same thing. It makes it so you're only working with one variable, okay? Just sort of the whole idea. So we get that x equals 2. Easy, right? But that one was convenient, too, okay? And so then I still need to go back and find y. Now, this is a little more complicated to find y. I mean, it's not terrible, but I don't have an equation that says y equals blah, blah, blah. But I can plug it into either equation that I want. Which one do you feel like? The first one? Okay. So if I plug that back in up top, it would say 2 plus 3y equals 14. Subtract 2 and subtract 2. So I get 3y equals 12, divide by 3, divide by 3, y equals 4, and so final coordinate, 2 comma 4. That makes sense? Follow that? Okay, I want to check and make sure. Good. Okay, looking at the second one, if I add together right now, is something going to cancel? No, but I'm really close. What do I wish? I sure wish what? That one of those twos was negative, right? Exactly. I can, I can make it negative. If I want it to be negative, I'm going to make it negative. But that means that I have to do the same thing for everything in that equation. So I need to make this a negative 3y and I need to make this a negative 7. Okay, so you're allowed to make it whatever you want as long as you do the same thing to the whole equation. So now when I add together, 2 and negative 2 cancel. 2 plus negative 3 makes negative 1. And 4 plus negative 7 is negative 3. Okay. Let's divide by negative 1. Divide by negative 1, and I get that y is equal to 3. And now when I go to plug back in, I can plug into either the, of the originals, or if I really wanted to, I could plug into that new one I made with all the negatives. What do you feel like? Top one, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So I would say 2x plus 2 times 3 equals 4. So that's really 2x plus 6 
equals 4. Minus 6 minus 6, I get 2x equals negative 2, so x equals negative 1. I'm not moving too fast on that for you, am I? I mean, maybe for you to write it down, but you're understanding that part, right? So, and then coordinate would be negative 1, comma, 3. Okay, getting a little harder. Number three there. Is anything going to cancel right now? All right, so tell me what you're wishing for mathematically. Yeah, I sure wish that top equation, that that was a positive 6, right? If I could make that into a positive 6, then these two things would cancel. I can do that. What would I have to multiply by here? 3. That just means I have to multiply my whole equation by 3. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the whole top equation by 3 in order to get that y to cancel out. So that's now going to give me 9x plus 6y equals, let's see, is that negative 78, I believe? And so now I'm really adding these two together. Okay, so I multiply the whole top equation by 3. Add together up and down, so I get 11x. My y's cancel. You want to make sure you don't add together until you've got something ready to cancel out. Okay? And then negative 10 and negative 78 is negative 88. Divide by 11, divide by 11. x equals negative 8. And then I can plug that into the original 2 or this new one that I made. What do you feel like? The first one, all right, so 3 times negative 8 plus 2y equals negative 26. That's negative 24 plus 2y equals negative 26. Add 24. So 2y equals negative 2, and y is going to equal negative 1. So final coordinate, negative 8, negative 1. Good? Tell you what, on that next one, let's just talk about how to get them to cancel. Okay? And I, I won't make us work all the way through it. Um, what do you notice about this one? Oh, fine. Yeah, nothing that's going to match, right? Nothing that's easy. And I can't make a 2 into a 5, I mean, without using decimals. And I guess it's not wrong to use decimals, but... We usually don't. Can't make a 2 into a 3. Drew, what do you think? Um, well, you can multiply the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 5. Okay. Um, yes. Do you want it for tomorrow? Because you're just going to get to work on it tomorrow. But if you want it early, you can have it. Brian, do you want it too? Okay. Okay. So when you're in this situation where you don't have anything that's going to cancel out easily, okay? Um, you can get just kind of pick. Do I want to cancel out the x's or am I going to cancel out the y's? doesn't matter. I could turn the x's both into 6's. I could turn the y's both into 10's. Okay, what I do like about the y's, what do I like about the y's already? I have a positive and negative. Not that that would be impossible to deal with, but just makes it easier. So yeah, so I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2. And that, I'm going to rewrite it down here, would be 4x plus 10y equals 30. And then I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 5. So that's going to give me 15x minus 10y equals negative 30. Okay? And then I would add together and solve. And, and your y's are going to cancel. By the way, what's this going to equal? 0. That's okay. You're going to end up with 19x equals 0. And then you just divide by 19 and you're good. Okay? Um, I think we're good. Mm, tell you what, you don't have to write down number five. Just watch me real quick. What would you want to multiply by here? Four on the top? Positive four? Okay. Yeah, if I multiply by positive four, that's going to give me negative 12, which doesn't cancel with negative 12. But if I multiply by a negative four, that's going to give me positive 12x. Um, negative 24y 
and negative 48. What do you notice? Hey, don't pack for just a second. I'm almost done. Okay? So I was trying to cancel out the x's, and that worked. But I also canceled out the y's. So this whole side is equal to what? Zero. And this also canceled out, so this is equal to zero. So I'm left with zero equals zero. What does that mean? Good. Infinitely many solutions. If this side had canceled out and this side had not, like if you had zero equals some other number, that would be a no solution. Good? Perfect timing.